Inconceivable. 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 Correct. The inconceivable did in fact happen. Sitting here a week ago, obviously the bookies had changed their opinion. The markets were going up. And where do we end up? Michael Loftus, Loftus Wealth Strategies for our weekly update ending Friday, June the 24th. And obviously, it's all about Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. But before we get there, let's get to the numbers. First up, S&P down 1.63 for the week, okay, has gone negative again at 0.32 down, down 1.55% uh, for the week, okay, and down 0.14% year to date. And NASDAQ continues to be the big lagger, okay, down 1.92 for the, for the uh, week and down 5.98% for the week. So getting right to the uh, news, the Brexit vote reveals a country split down the middle. Isn't that the truth? When you look at this quick chart, I mean, it was inside London and outside of London, okay? Meaning inside of London uh, voted to stay, outside did not. The older people voted to get out, they want their old London back. The millennials went the other direction. So very interesting and obviously shook up the markets. Here's a quick quote from Nigel Farragher, UKIP leader, who was the big driving force behind the leave. It's a victory for ordinary people, decent people. It's a victory against the big merchant banks, against the big businesses, and against big politics. And I'm proud of everybody. Now, when you look at that quote, Obviously, it almost ties into what we've been hearing through our campaigns here in America. And I no doubt believe that, you know, when you look at geopolitical risk and here uh, as we get closer to the election, I would anticipate some more political risk as well going forward. So this week, how Brexit could stress out the markets. Obviously, that's all we're talking about. Futures were not looking good this morning. I'll talk about that at the end here. Next up, the pound hits. A 31-year low. Big. We have to watch that. Okay? And last up, dining out falls victim to the economy. We've been talking about the consumer. They've been holding their money. They're not spending their money. We look at the underemployed, what's happening out there. And here, as we saw some of the low-end shopping places picking up, we're starting to see a drop-off in that casual dining sector, which is big. Okay? Data for the week, it seems like everything got lost last week. It was Janet Yellen only, okay? And when Janet came in, we know that she became more hawkish. Outside of that, I think the consumer goods uh, orders were down 2.2%. We're looking for a minus 0.4% number, okay? Uh, so a little bit shocking on Friday, and nonetheless, obviously, it kind of got lost in the shuffle. So this week, as far as data points, personal income, consumer spending, uh, weekly job claims on Friday, and then the ISM manufacturing number on Friday. I think we have to look at that pretty strong. But the big one's going to be on uh, Tuesday, GDP, looking for a 1% number, 1.1, and we have not been over 1 for quite a few quarters. So we'll look to that as well. Let's get quickly to the charts. Okay, first off, when I look at the charts, we've got the VIX. Okay, and we've talked about the volatility index for quite some time. Uh, it had spiked a couple weeks ago, pulled back last week with the thought that the Brexit was not going to happen. Okay, and we had a huge spike uh, on Friday, as you can imagine, well above 25 and up again this morning as we uh, go into this week's market. Tens and twos, 10 year treasury, you look at that trend, had its biggest drop since 2007. Our 10s this morning, 1.484%, minus our two-year at 0 0.5935, 0 0.89 spread. So again, I've been talking about who has not been telling the truth, the markets or the bond market. It seems like the bond market knew a little bit more. We saw that flight to quality and seeing our yields being driven down. The dollar, that's the next big one. Obviously, big spike on Friday, 
really need to watch this. It also affected oil, okay? But is it getting to the point where we were in January and we had to see a devalue and change in the yuan? So another big one to watch. Uh, next up, the S&P, right? We've looked at this all year. We've been in this tight trading space for two years, right? Our most recent high was 2134. We continue to be in a downtrend, okay? With our big move on the downside on Friday, we really broke through uh, the 50-day. We're right at the 200-day moving average. All right, if we break through that 2,000 level, which is where we are right now as I do this video, I think that we have a, a real good opportunity to see our most recent lows if we see some follow-through this week. But Friday at 4 always matter. Okay, next up, volume. We've talked about that. And uh, Friday on volume, it was three times the norm, okay? So as I said, as we go into this week, um, markets, uh, futures were down. Markets opened up across the board about 1% down. Our short-term indicators continue to be negative since May the 12th. Quarterly indicators are positive. Long-term continue to be negative. So what, if anything, should you do this week, okay? Number one, I think that... Brexit, keep calm and stay the course. This is the typical mantra of Wall Street and all the big fund companies who want you to stay the course, okay? You have to evaluate your personal situation. If you are younger, stay the course because you have an opportunity to buy on the dips, okay? If you are nearing or in retirement, you need to look at your risk, okay? Do we have a follow-through? Was this the catalyst to confirm this downtrend? Okay, and we lost upwards of 3% alone on Friday. Okay, what are you comfortable with? Look at what you lost on Friday in real dollars. Okay, because that's what it comes down to. You know, look at your portfolio. Make sure your risk matches your portfolio. Okay, and look to the future. Okay, and if it means stepping out, it's okay. We're okay with that here. A lot of people say stay the course. We're actually going to do a video on that that's coming out uh, sometime later this week, but you have to do what's right for you. As everybody knows from these videos, although I don't give my portfolio out, we've been basically underweight equities, less than 20% on equities. We had a hedge in place, and we also had uh, a large 60-plus percent bond position. And subsequently on Friday, we eliminated 86% pretty much across the board give or take up or down on the portfolio. So we fared very well on Friday, which is what we look to do, manage risk. As always, if you have any questions about your particular portfolio, if we, if we could be of assistance, please give us a call, check out our website, join us on any of our social media platforms, and also check out our upcoming mid-year event. This is Michael Loftus, Loftus Wealth Strategies. Thank you so much for watching, and make it a great week.